right what is up youtube uh today i'm going to show you guys our i already started putting my engine together but i had a lot of requests to uh show you guys the process of me putting it back together and so today i just decided to start recording and and showing you guys what i'm doing um i guess first up what i'm going to show you or right, tell you guys what i got done was uh machine work to the block so for the block the block was bored out to 86.5 so it can fit the Waseco uh, pistons in there, the oversized pistons. Uh, it was also port flushed, acid bath, uh, aligned honed, and the crank was polished and the whole rotating assembly was balanced. Pretty much for the first, I guess, step is uh, putting, to, or putting in the crankshaft and uh, figuring out like your bearing clearances and stuff. So. You're not going to need that much tools, but uh, you are going to need a plastic gauge or mics if you have access to mics. Uh, assembly lube. This is a 11 millimeter tool point for the rod bolts. And this is going to be a 5 8 tool point, And those are for the main caps. Uh, ARP assembly lubrication. Some automatic transmission fluid. And shop rags. Uh, torque wrenches. Extensions. And a rigor bar. That's pretty much all you're gonna need really. The reason why you get automatic transmission fluid and shop tiles by the way, is to make sure you can keep your uh, your engine surfaces as clean as possible. Uh, this is a pretty good cleaning solution, I guess you could say, uh, to get all that dirt out of there whenever you're working on it. Another good idea is to uh, get like a trash bag, like a see-through trash bag like that. And whenever you're not working on the engine, just toss it over it so no debris gets on it overnight. So that's another really good idea to do. So I guess now what I'm going to do is tell you guys what I got from my rods, pistons, and, you know, all that sort of good stuff. Let's see. I am using Waseco, or reusing my Waseco pistons because there's nothing wrong with them. Uh, K1 rods, they come with uh, ARP 2000 uh, rod fastener, or rod bow fasteners. Let's see, put that right here. Um, you can already see that most of it's already assembled. Uh, for the mains, these are also ARP main, uh, the main circuit. And I forgot the part number, but I'll link it in the description below. Uh, this is the OEM crankshaft, and I am also using OEM, uh, thrust washers. For my bearings, um, I did want to go with King bearings this time, but I got, I got a really good deal, to, uh, with the ACO bearings, thanks to, uh, Tim Herbert from a uh, Jim Coop store. He got me a really good deal on the, on the main and rod bearings, which are ACO oversized, or not oversized, but extra oil clearance bearings. So since the crankshaft is already installed, I really, you know, can't show you guys the installation process, but I, I'm gonna try breaking it down and telling you guys uh, how to do it. Uh, so first thing was first, I did put the oil squirters back in. I believe that was a size 13 or 14. I can't remember exactly, but it's a basic uh, basic uh, toolbox to, uh, size. After I put the, the oil squirters in, I went ahead and cleaned up all of my uh, bearing surfaces where my bearings are gonna go. Uh, wiped it down with, uh, with uh, blue shop racks. Uh, just cleaned it really, really good on the main caps, the top part of them and the bottom part as well as cleaned all the, the crankshaft journals. I cleaned them up really, really well. All right, so I know you guys might be thinking like, okay, just go ahead and throw the bearings in, throw the crankshaft in and just tying everything up and then go on to the next step. Well, before you actually do that, you need to uh, figure out your bearing clearances. And how do you do that is you're gonna use this dude over here this is a plastic gauge set. If you don't know how to use it, look it up. There's tons of videos on how to use it. Basically, there's a little strip in there, very, very tiny, and you're gonna put it between, or put it on the journal. Pretend this is like the crank, the crank journal, or the main cap journals. You're gonna put it on the journal, and then you're gonna smush it with the main cap, with the bearings installed, okay? And then you're gonna torque, you're gonna torque the, the mains down, and then take it off, and then measure it, which is also provided in here. And you're gonna measure with um, with the gauge, what it has on there. 
and that's going to help you determine what your bearing clearances are or get really close to it to get it like 100 percent accurate bearing clearance uh i would recommend using mics which i don't have access to so i just want to use plastic gauge after you determine your bearing clearance or your oil clearances uh you're going to want to go ahead and get wd-40 a blue shop rag and just wipe the surfaces down where the where you had your uh, plastic gauge on you don't want that plastic gauge thing on there you want to wipe it off all right so after you figure out your oil clearances you're going to go ahead and install the thrust washers and they're going to go on cap number three right here and you're going to want to make sure that on your thrust washer on your thrust washers that the little grooves that are sticking out on it you're going to want them to face outward so those grooves on the thrust washers those oil grooves you're going to want them to face outwards okay you don't want them facing inwards towards each other or else it, you're, you're going to mess it up <clears throat> or else you're going to mess it up so thrust washer bearings the grooves go outward I just want to note is there is a certain way to torque down the crankshaft. Um, really, to me, it's, I want to say, don't quote me on this. I, I could be wrong because I don't remember on top of my head, but I believe it was one, two, three, and four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. I believe that was the way how to do it but I could, like again like i said i could be wrong uh you might want to double check on how to, the torque sequence on that all right so basically your crank's installed now your your main caps are torqued down all the way um up next what you would want to do is do the rods so one thing i want to note is that the mains they're numbered I mean, one, two, three, four, and five. And you're also going to know which way they're sticking out is by the arrow pointing this way. So that's that's one thing I want to note so you don't mess them up. Yes, all the main caps, they go on a specific, uh, they have to get lined up correctly, okay? Um, another good way to figure out if it's correct or not is, let's see. You see how, like, on... There you go, I'll see you better. You see how like on the rod bearings, you can see like those two little divots in it. You want those two to line up. It's the same deal for the mains. Another thing I want to note is you please like for sure, if you don't use the ARP uh, assembly loop that they provide you, I almost, I can promise you, you are going to strip these easy. I Like 100%. Um, please, please use a, a assembly loop, or else you're you're gonna end up going back to ARP and ordering new main bolts, and that's not what you want. But I think that's pretty much it for all the tips I can give you guys. Um, I don't think I missed anything. If I missed anything, I'll put it in the description below. Also, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, link all the parts that I got that are parts that I have uh, all their links in the description below as well and yeah that's pretty much it for this video I guess we're gonna call this part one and then tomorrow we'll do the the rods and we'll call that part two how to assemble the rods uh, the bearings uh, how they gap the rings how to install them into the cylinders all that sort of good stuff but yeah until next time guys there's